Welcome to the Equipping You in Grace podcast, hosted by Dave Jenkins. The Equipping You in Grace podcast is a podcast about helping Christians develop a biblical worldview in a conversational tone about issues inside and outside the church. Now, for today's episode, let's join our host, Dave Jenkins. Hey guys, welcome back to the Equipping You in Grace podcast. My name is Dave and I'm the host for this podcast. And today uh, we're going to take a break from this week from doing uh, author interviews today. Uh, we do have a great lineup coming up, but today I wanted to do uh, this episode on uh, a very special topic that, that means a great deal to me. And I hope that it'll, it means a lot to you. Uh, we're going to talk about mentorship and what that means and what that looks like. It, it's not something that I think we talk enough about in the church, so I hope that this is this is helpful. You know, over the years, uh, I, I've had a lot of, of mentors. Uh, in high school, I had a youth pastor and a youth elder who, who invested a, a great deal uh, of time and effort and energy into my life. Um, during a period of time when my my parents were get were divorced and even before that when they were struggling in their marriage um, these men came alongside of me <coughs> and um, and invested in me they they walked with me they they helped me um, and even after high school they 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 helped me and um, there were there have been other men one of the one of the men that God has used significantly in my life I I dedicated um, uh, part of my book, uh, not only to my wife, but also to this man because and his name is Mike Bowden. About uh, two weeks ago, uh, Mike uh, unfortunately went to be with the Lord. He um, had COVID and he, his lungs were filled with fluid. And the day before um, he, he passed and went to be with the Lord, I got to, to share with him over text about how much he meant to me. And um, I'm so thankful that, that I got to do that because it really, it really meant a lot to me. And I'm sure it, it meant, I know it meant a lot to him. And he got to share a little bit with me. But um, about two weeks ago, he went to be with the Lord. And um, I, I just wanted to, I remember the first time I, I met Mike <laughs> uh, and, and um, some of our very first conversations. Uh, you know, he, Mike, the Lord used Mike in my life at a time when I was coming out of a church where I, I experienced uh, spiritual abuse and Mike came alongside of me. He helped me. He, he pointed out things in my life that, that needed to be worked on, where I needed to grow in humility. But Mike also believed in me. He gave me opportunities to, to serve the Lord, um, even alongside of him. And he would even uh, later send me to hospitals uh, on his behalf to to go visit fellow church members and, and to minister to them. He gave me opportunities to preach. He, he uh, gave me opportunities to, to lead a, a men's Bible study and to speak to the men at, at our church. Um, he was very passionate about uh, men. And some of the things that he taught me, um, you know, I'll never forget one time I asked him, I said, you know, um, I would ask him, do you think I should apply for this pastor position? Or do you think that uh, I'm ready to to apply, and there would be times when he would say yes, and there were there were times when he would say no, and I, and and I, I I rarely asked why because I I already knew the answer. <laughs> you know the things that you can take away from that are you know Mike was Mike was one of the best one on one disciplers that I have that I have ever encountered. I, I the Lord graciously um, saved me. Uh, at the age of five, I've, I've, I'm now 40, so I've been a Christian uh, 35 years. Um, Mike, my, I, I have many friends who are pastors serving the Lord uh, all over the United States and um, in various capacities and ways as ministry leaders and pastors, writers, authors, podcasters, etc. But but Mike was one of the best disciplers, one-on-one disciplers I, I have ever met. He's one of the best, in my estimation, not to compare to anybody, he's one of the best shepherding pastors. And and what Mike did so well was he would he would be fully present with you. He he would listen to you. 
um, and you wanted to share what was what was happening with with you with your soul. What's what's happening with you? And he would sit there and he would listen, and then he often he wouldn't say much, but he would he would pray. He would put his hand on mine, and he would pray for me. And that that ministered to me so so much. Um, he was present. He was there. You knew that that Mike cared about you. You know, I, I once asked Mike, I said, Mike, do you want to come on my podcast? Because I think you have something to share with, with other people. And Mike being Mike, <laughs> he said, no, I don't, I don't want to go on a podcast. Uh, Mike didn't even go on social media. He had social media, but he didn't want to post on social media. Um, and that says something too about Mike the man. You know, he, he was a, a, an incredible people person he genuinely loved people and and he wanted people to grow the people in in his church uh, where he had served uh for for many years about 20 years or so he wanted them to grow in the grace of god he he wanted people uh to grow to be like jesus and and he used all sorts of tools and ways that he had learned uh he was involved with awana for about 15 years uh, in ministry for Almost 40 years, this man, and um, he is a dear, dear friend, dear brother to me, and uh, I am, I am so, so thankful for him. You know, and, and you know, we can learn so much from men like Mike. You, know, you, you, you may not think that you have much as a man or even a woman to to share with with other people, and I certainly understand what that's like. You know. You may not feel like you're you're the most qualified or even the best person to to speak to an issue, but you know what all of us can do? We can zip our lip, we can sit and we can listen at, to somebody who's hurting, somebody who's struggling and somebody who's in pain, somebody who has questions and doubts and fears and uh, you can sit there and and some of the most profound things that Mike ever told me um, they happen really as an aside. He he would just start talking about with me about how how he handled a variety of situations and and really one of the one of the most profound things that he said to me was begin to see people Dave through the lens of Jesus you know and and we were talking about a difficult person that that I was dealing with and and he was even sharing about you know he would sit we were talking in his office so he would say you know I sit in my office and I talk with difficult people all the time and I just have to remember not to get upset but to see them and pray Lord help me to see that person through the lens of the good shepherd and, and you know that made a profound impact almost immediately on me it continues to make a profound impact on me you, you think about that state as i've thought about that statement now uh since i heard it now uh, many many years ago uh what it, what it does is it gets us to slow down you know we're, we're often so easy we live in an age that it, where it's easy to respond and to say hey here's this and here's that and uh, here's this issue, and it's it's easy to to be so quick to to speak and and not be slow uh, to to speak um, and quick to listen, as the Bible tells us. You know, this is this is so important because uh, what what my friendship with Mike really instilled in me was not only you know what it means to speak the truth in love, which he modeled so well. And, and he, he often would tell me the hard thing. Um, I remember one of our first real conversations. He said, you know what, Dave? You don't have a knowledge problem. You have a relational maturity problem. And, and let's, let's work on that. And, and, but in fact, he didn't even say that. He, he proceeded to show me, show me by his own example, what relational maturity was. One time I asked him, you know, what what do you mean when I was over at my house? What is this? What do you mean by this? And he and he told me, but and then I was like, ah, then I got it because you know what? I I, I needed the, uh, probably a little bit of explanation, but I saw what it looked like in his life. I saw what it looked like when he would go to the hospital visits or tell me he needed to go to the hospital. He he couldn't uh, talk or meet or or something, and it and it had nothing to do with. Him not wanting to, to meet and to talk and to and to be there for me, it had to do with he, he had to minister to other people. You know what what Mike in my relationship 
uh, was like. It was very much Proverbs twenty seven seventeen: as iron sharpens iron, so one so one person sharpens. You know, God used this um, used this relationship in my life. It was it was um, I, I I equate this mentoring relationship that that Mike and I had to to something like this. It was we rarely we would rarely talk about theology. We would talk about our lives. We would talk about you know the things that that God was doing in our lives or, or in our ministries or a lot about what was happening with my parents and and then and then what come came out of that was real ministry. You know, sanctification, friends, it's messy. It it, it hurts. And this is where good theology comes in. It, it helps us to to be able to speak the truth and love with one another. That's that's why we have to get in each other's lives. And this is what mentoring does. It it helps us uh to get into each other's lives. It helps older men to speak into the lives of younger men, as Titus 2 talks about. Um and, and this is so important because, you know, for for me, I know that for a fact <laughs> that if I have not had older men in my life, uh, in, in in the church, godly, mature men, I, I would not be still in ministry. Um, and and I and I probably would not. My marriage would not be on the solid footing that it is, or any any part of my life would would really be going very well because I can tell you that that I, I experienced a great deal of emotional and mental abuse uh, in my teen years. Um, I, I've experienced um, spiritual abuse uh, by Christian leaders, uh, supposed pastors and ministry leaders. And you know, these things hurt. Uh, if it weren't for these men, um, I, I would not, I would not still be, uh, I would not have a ministry e- anymore. Um, I would not, s- still be in ministry at all and you know those are those are shocking things to say and um for some of you to to probably hear but god used these men in such a powerful way in my life um you know mike mike was a was a dear man to so so many people he he meant the world uh to people because you know what mike mike really loved the lord and he loved jesus you know there was a period of of time i i moved away from idaho and i still don't live in idaho but i i moved away from idaho in 2017 and and i remember him when in my garage standing there he he had helped me uh, and, and a lot of other men had helped uh, 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 my wife and I move out of our house to pack up the truck. And he said, you know, I'm not going to be able to help you or come and finish. I, I have a lot to do tomorrow. You know, I just want you to know that I love you and you you mean a lot to me. And, we, and we've kept in touch. But, you know, even even there, I need to say something about the value of mentorship. And what you need to understand is, it, 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 Mike and I had such a close relationship that that we we talked and we shared and every day and Mike became a for me when I moved away I realized that Mike had become a crutch in the first year I had leaned on him so much that he had become a crutch for me it became so easy to share with with Mike about what was happening and um, moving away was, was a good in, in a way, many ways, it was very hard for me, but it was also very good for me because what the Lord did in, in my soul in, in the first year, um, uh, it helped me. In fact, the Lord used it to address areas of discontentment and, and idols in my life and um, to spend more time, a focused time in prayer and in the Word and and, and and the Lord continues to use that in my life, um, even today. Um, you know, friend, you might wonder, what, what does mentorship look like? Uh, well, very basically, it can look like you just establishing a relationship with an older man, uh, getting to know him, building a friendship, um, letting uh, sharing life with one another. We, we think we, we can meet, in, and I'm not discouraging theological conversation. I, I am the biggest theological nerd you'll, you'll, you'll probably ever meet. Uh, I love theology. I, I love to talk about theology. I, I, I can talk about theology all day long. Just ask my wife sometime. You know, maybe I will when, when we have her back on. I'll ask her, tell, tell, tell our, those who lo- listen to this podcast, how much does Dave like theology? And how much can Dave talk about theology? I, I could just, 
You can just imagine uh, we have we have theological conversation all the time about all sorts of things because here's the thing and this is why I'm sharing this is you know theology isn't just having a theology conversation it's it's theology is for all of life it's and all of life is before the face of God and so all theology is is, is for all uh, of life because all of life is is theological so as we talk about christian mentoring um, that is that is so important because you can meet and you can talk about life. You you can meet and you you can talk about specific areas that you want to grow in and and those kinds of things. But here, let me tell you a story. I was meeting in the this is when I was out of high school and I was meeting with a pastor, a different pastor now. This is early, about 2000, 2001, and, and he would ask me how I am, and I would say, oh, I'm doing fine, And but then towards the, the end, I, I would start sharing, you know, we, we would meet for about an hour every week, and, and towards the end, uh, I, I would share how, how, what I'm doing, and how I am, and those kind of things, and he would say, you know, I wish you had said this at the beginning, he would always say at the end, I wish you would share this at the beginning about what's happening with you so that we could talk about it. So let's talk about that next time, right? And I kept doing this, and he kept telling me this. And and, I, and I, when I left that place, I, I one of the things that, that I learned out of that was I needed to share with people straight up. When they ask me how I am, I, I need to tell them straight up, how am I? Uh, what's going on? Obviously, that's going to look different with different people depending on how close I am and, and so on. But I need to be, the point there that I learned was I needed to be honest. I need to be real. I need I needed to, to drop the, the, you know, the facade. Um, you know, that's, that's really one of the keys to, if you're going to pursue a mentoring type of relationship with the older man, younger men, you need to drop the facade and you need to be real. And you need to talk about the real things that are happening in your in your life and you need to zip your lip and you need to listen to what's happening to what they're saying to you you know you need to make sure that they're a trustworthy person that they have good theology i'm not saying that you just go and find somebody you need to make sure that they're solid that they're solid in their theology uh and that they really love the bible and love the lord and and live a life worthy of imitation as paul talks about in first corinthians 11 verse 1 and 2 um so so those are some things that i would say and you know you can have a plan um you know you can read and, and discuss scripture and i'm not saying that we didn't do that we, we talked about all sorts of theological issues uh, but be willing when, when they point out blind spots in your life, say things like, Hey, Dave, you have this issue in your life, a uh, thing that you need to work on. Are, are you going to be open to that? Are you going to listen to that? Because if not, then, you know, you need to be real about that. You know, um, are you going to be thankful for the ways in which they're going to speak into you know your life and and you know many people say they want real accountability but you know when it when it comes down to it they don't want real accountability if you're a christian leader whether you're a pastor or, or an elder you should be intentional about pursuing uh accountability i can tell you when i moved to a new area um uh, i am always on the lookout for trustworthy guys that i can share with and and i can you know get to know and and say hey would you hold me be willing to you know we have a, a friendship here uh what could we meet in and you hold me accountable and, and and of course always my pastor is holding me accountable too but but i'm just saying like you need to be looking at for those kind of things um you know what kind of person should you look for to be a mentor well galatians 5 22 through 23 the the fruits of the spirit are, are just some of the things that you should be looking for this lays out a, a, a foundation for uh, what you need to know about growing as a christian and even helping somebody to grow remember you know everything you you need uh, that you have because the holy spirit right he uses the word in our lives to to point us to convict us of our sin, to point us to Jesus, and to send us out on mission for God's glory. Um, so God can God can use you to be a mentor. Are you willing to be a friend to somebody? Well, then you can be used by God to speak the truth uh, to people. You have something to say because we have 66 books 
uh, in the Word of God. That's why you should be reading and studying and, and meditating on and memorizing and applying the Word to your life because, you know, you have, you have as you're reading, as you're studying, you know, God is using that to to give you knowledge and, and understanding of His Word and His ways and, and be studying good good theological books. Uh, you know, that's why we have all these great po- uh, author interviews so that you you can not only hear from solid authors, but so that you can, uh, and solid guests, but so that you can, um, you know, yourself, go get those books and, and read them or, or and study them. We, we also talk about a variety of subjects, you know, on Wednesday. Um, and we got a great, great list of th- topics that we're going to talk about in the coming year. And I'm really excited about this. But you see, if the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, you have something to pass on to another person. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you're doing. John 16.13 says, When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. You don't have to be perfect to be a mentor. You don't have to have all the answers or, or all the theology answers or even all the ministry experience or even a particular personality. You have to have a willing, a humble heart, a desire to share what God has done in your life because of Christ. And, and, to, and to show people from the Word what, what that means and what that looks like. Uh, if you're not sure where to begin, start reading the Word of God. Start praying. You know, maybe ask the Lord, Lord, would you give me opportunities to, to speak into the lives of, of those around me? Be, be looking for those opportunities. You know, some, here's some principles to help you think about the accept, uh, essential activities you might plan as you seek to mentor effectively. Cultivate a humble and, and teachable attitude within w- yourself. You know, spend Spend time, quality time, availing yourself of the means of God's grace in the Word of God and prayer. Pray for opportunities to minister to other people, whether through evangelism or discipleship or mentorship or, or to minister to a friend who is hurting. Pray pray for people in your local church. Pray for your pastor. Um, practice vulnerability with other people. You know, not talking, uh, and, and let's qualify this. We're not talking about talking about yourself and making yourself the point of the conversation, but sharing about what the Lord is doing in your life in a compelling way. Sharing about, hey, you know, this person uh, taught me, I I learned these things from this person as they were following Jesus. This this is a compelling gospel witness to people. It, It helps them not just to hear the truth, but to catch the truth. That, that is so important too. It's important that we not only tell the truth because we're a people of the truth, but that we help people get uh, to catch the truth by the way in which we live our, our lives. You know, if you struggle with a particular sin or area of your life or you're suffering, uh, be honest with the person uh, that you're going to mentor or you're discipling. Uh, this is going to create um, opportunities for them and a safe place for them to to share with you. Um, you know, we we see this mentoring relationship all through the Bible. You know, Jesus only spent three years of li- his life uh, out of thirty three in public ministry. Uh, this this period of time, it's it's well known for the miracles, the other significant events, but much of his focus, right, was on the relationship he had with his closest associates whom the Bible refers to as his disciples. Jesus taught them everything that they would need for a lifetime of following him. But even more importantly, he taught them in a way that enabled them to teach everybody else uh, that they came in contact with. In fact, Jesus knew that he couldn't mentor everyone personally. He chose 12 men whose responsibility was to multiply themselves by passing everything he taught them on to others who would pass on to others still. So as you think about who you're going to mentor, follow Jesus' example. Read the Gospels. Learn about how Jesus interacted with his disciples. Um, and as you begin that mentoring relationship, you, you might also explain uh, the, that your vision for mentoring is investing in people with a willingness, if not yet the confidence, to pass on what they learn to others. This is mentoring the way of Jesus. Jesus also walked through the ups and downs of life with his disciples. 
this is most obvious in in the life of Peter. You know, Peter was he was a hot head and he was impulsive. He was one of Jesus's closest friends, and yet the night that Jesus was on trial before he died, Peter uh, denied that that he was Jesus's friend to a group of people. At that moment, Jesus needed him the most. Peter put himself first. And yet after Jesus died and he came back to life, he met up with Peter to restore the relationship, right? And so Jesus helped Peter grow in character by walking with him through failures, through disappointments. And these strengthened Peter's faith. He, he told Peter, who was called Simon, then uh, Luke twenty two thirty two, 32, I prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. See, after Jesus met with Peter and told him he was forgiven and loved, Peter did become a leader of the church. The people you mentor are going to mess up. They're going to need space and even permission to make mistakes and sin. And, and you're going to be there to, to walk alongside of them you know, to help them, to share, hey, you know what, I, I've done that too. This builds, this kind of sharing builds trust, but also shows them not only what not to do, but here's what to do. Here's how to, here's how to help this. I, I remember, and I've, I believe I've shared this on this podcast, but there was a man in my Bible study in the church in Idaho I was at, and he was, he was difficult. But, but what I ended up realizing through uh, another man pointing this out to me was, you know what? It wasn't so much that this man was difficult. It, it, the difficult person in the room was was me. And, and when I began to realize that, um, that that helped me. And anyway, I was sitting in this meeting with, with with this other guy who in the men's ministry and and this difficult person. And we and we were just talking it out. And I realized he, what he was. I was listening to him. And I realized what he was telling me was he ultimately didn't feel that I cared about him. And I said, I am so sorry that you feel that way. And I will work on that. And I did, by the grace of God. But see, as you persevere through challenges with somebody, you're going you're gonna to learn and you're going to grow. And God's going to use those things like... Uh, what do I met like Mike would say to me, these are sandpaper people and, and God is using them to, to you know shape you and, and mold you. Don't don't see one of the biggest lessons that I learned from Mike was don't see difficult people as an obstacle to God's grace. Begin to see difficult people as, as an avenue, as a means that, that God wants to use to help you personally to grow so that you can help and serve other people. I, I can't tell you how how huge that has been for me. I, I know that dealing with difficult people is, is hard. It's challenging. It, it takes time to, to stop and to pause and, and to think and, and, and to reflect. Um, but, but get some tools in your toolkit. Uh, take some time to, to even think now about, you know what? In when that difficult person, when those difficult uh, situations, when those difficult things happen, are you going to pray and ask the Lord for his help? Or are you going to rely on yourself? And the, and the answer is, you shouldn't rely on yourself. The answer is, you should ask the Lord, by His grace, through the Spirit, for His help. And His help, He will give. He'll give it. He promises to give it in abundance. And you need it. And that's why I need you and you need me. We need to speak the truth in, in love. In the book of Acts, we see other great examples of mentoring the apostle paul who is also called saul wrote much of the new testament he was mentored by barnabas in the context of their journeys as missionaries these two men they spent time investing in some of the earliest christian churches passing on what they knew they lived with the church in antioch for a year where they taught new believers the basics of christianity in fact barnabas sought paul out for the tax task acts uh, 11 25 through 26 says Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first to Antioch. And after his relationship with Barnabas ended, Paul brought Timothy, whom he was mentoring, with him on his journey. In fact, they, uh, they were so close that Paul calls him my son in 2 Timothy 1-2. Having a heart to help people grow and imparting the wisdom that you've learned is at the heart of Christian mentoring. It, it's what it's what Mike did so well. He he not only you know listened, 
He not only cared about people, but, but this was because Mike loved Jesus. And he truly cared about people. And it, and it made a, an enormous difference in people's lives. All, all, oh, so many people's lives. In our church, and in our community, and outside of our community. Uh, Mike was very intentional. He, he believed even in using tools. He, there was a ministry called the Armor of God Coin Ministry. Uh, but Mike didn't believe that the Armor of God Coin was, you know, by itself the only means. He believed that, that God, by the Spirit, used the Word of God uh, to convict and to point people to Jesus and to send them out on mission. But the armor of God was a tool that, that Mike believed in and Mike used uh, in discipleship. He, he would say, are you armored up? And if you, didn't have your, if you didn't have your coin when you were in the men's ministry, you were going to buy him a, a coffee or you were going to buy him a soda. Um, and that was a rule in our church. You, every guy had to have one. If you, if you asked for the coin and they didn't have it or, 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 or they didn't know about it, if they didn't know about it, they didn't know you would drink. But then you would give them one, and and I would have I would have you know several coins in my pocket to hand out to men, and then I would ask them, are are you do you, are you armored up? And I would explain that you know to them when when I gave them the coin and and those kind of things. And uh, if they didn't have their coin and I had given him one, uh, you know what? Uh, they were gonna buy me a coffee or a drink, uh, a soda. And here's the thing, just wrapping up this episode. You know, Mike was uh, a very godly man. He made a big impact on my life. You know, he's he's left a big hole in, uh, in many people's lives, myself included. But, you know, I'll never forget the conversation I had with him the day before he had a stroke. And which was the day that he died. I told him, you know, Mike, I just want you to know that that I love you and that I'm so thankful for the investment that you have made in my life. And I am so thankful for that investment. And I want you guys to know that, you know, when it's easy to record content and and to talk about theology, but you know what? Life life really hurts. And I miss Mike. I'm not going to lie. I, I love Mike. I'll always remember him what he's taught me. And I want to encourage you to find a Christian mentor. Find an older man if you're a guy. Even if you're a pastor, find an older man. Find an older pastor to help you, to walk alongside of you. Because you know what? You won't last in ministry and you won't grow to be in the ways that God wants you to grow apart from that. God will use it. He will honor it and he'll bless it. I, I don't know of a single effective ministry leader who hasn't had godly older men speak truth in their lives and help them grow in the ways that they needed to grow. And you know what? None of us, none of us has arrived this side of heaven and we need one another. We, I, I still need, even though I, even though I've been doing this now 21 years, I recognize even more that I, I need that in my life. And that's why I have it because I know that it's so easy to fall off the ditch and I don't want to fall off the ditch. I want to finish my race. I want to receive my reward and what i want the lord to be honored by my life and ministry and i want to finish well and i want that for you and i want that for for those who write for for me at servants of grace and i want that for those of you who listen and watch these episodes every week thank you for that thank you for the honor and the privilege of letting me into your homes into your lives to speak truth to you it is it is an amazing blessing i want to thank you for listening or watching this episode of equipping you in grace until wednesday may god bless you and keep you Thank you for listening to the Equipping You in Grace podcast. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, rate us on the app, and share this with your friends and family on social media. If you want to find us on social media, you can find us on Twitter at Servants of Grace, on Instagram at Servants of Grace, or by searching at Servants of Grace on Facebook. You can also find this episode and many others like it on the front page of our website, servantsofgrace.org.